Welcome back. I'm Julia Roberts, and this is Hello, What Would You Like to Discuss Today? The podcast show that takes an in-depth look into social issues that affect us all. And today, we have Gabriel Underwood, a wastewater treatment specialist, discussing the poo-poo in our water system. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's me, Nuzo Castro-Libro, and I was playing a nice little joke out of you listeners, huh? You really thought you had the wrong show. Poo-poo waste treatment. <laughs> and that was funny. Hey, so you guys are lucky you got the right show because I have a wonderful guest today that you're going to enjoy. I got this writer, unlike my cousin Vincenzo, who's a writer, and I wanted to be on the show. You see, Vincenzo wrote uh, to this columnist that advises on the relationships. Her name is Dear Abby, I think. And uh, he got his uh, little note published, and now he thinks he's a writer. So to make a short story longer, uh, basically, Dear Abby gave uh, Vincenzo, my cousin, advice that he should uh, seek a couple of therapy. And I'm uh, like, how is that going to work? It's uh, between him, his wife, and about uh, 25 or 30 other guys. I mean, how are they even going to fit in the therapist's office? You know what I mean? And uh, that's a lot of people in an office. You know what? Vincenzo, if you're listening, uh, don't listen to what the the Rebbe said. Listen to what I say. Pack your suitcase and get the hell out of that house. Plus, how are they going to fit 25 or 30 guys in your sedan when you all got to go to the appointment for the uh, couples of therapy? You know, it makes no sense. So, we are excited to have Bruce Borer, who's a real writer, and not like my cousin Vincenzo, who's a real dog catcher. And Bruce wrote a couple of books, one on retirement, which is crazy, because I see him on all the TV talk shows, and I listen to him on the uh, talk radio shows. And he wrote another book about his experience for 10 seasons as an usher at Wrigley Field for the Chicago Cubbies, which is fantastic, because I'm in Chicago, and I love it to go to Wrigley Field, and I love it to drink some beers and have some hot dogs in the sun. It is the most beautiful park that you can ever imagine. I probably think it's the best park in the country. And if you've never been there, you gotta go. It's a great day in the park. And Bruce worked there for 10 seasons. So I can only imagine what stories he's gonna share. So let's introduce Bruce Bohr. Bruce, hey! What do you want to talk about? Well, Nuzo, you know, first of all, thanks so much for having me on your podcast. I'm, uh, it's quite an honor for me to be to be one of your guests, one of your early guests. It's a thrill for me to be here. Um, I was thinking, you know, with spring right around the corner and, and spring training starting actually this week, what a great thing we could do is, is to talk about, about baseball. And, uh, you know, I worked as, a, as an usher at Wrigley Field for nine years, and I wrote a book about it called uh, Best Seat in the House, Diary of a Wrigley Field Usher. And so I love Wrigley. I love the Cubs. And I know you're a huge Cubs fan. Why don't, why don't we talk about that? I don't say I was a Cubs fan. I mean, I like the Cubs, but I think I'm a bigger uh, hot dog eater and a beer drinking in the sun fan. And uh, and that makes me a Wrigley Field fan, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful place to go and uh, have a beer. You know what I mean, Bruce? I do. You know, it's funny you say that. Um, one of the things I found out pretty early on while working as an usher is people just, they come to Wrigley Field for Wrigley Field. Bruce, I really don't know why you say it's a funny. I was being serious. It is a great place to go have a, like a cocktail. You know what I mean? Uh, no, so I didn't mean like you're being funny. What I, what I meant was so many people would agree with you that Wrigley Field is just an awesome place to, to spend a day and hang out and enjoy uh, enjoy the sun and the baseball. Oh. Okay, Bruce, I'm sorry I misunderstand. I'm just not paying a lot of attention to you because uh, I got this thing out of my mind. Uh, you know, are you familiar with uh, Facebook? Uh, yeah, isn't everybody familiar with Facebook? Well, uh, maybe I shouldn't tell you that, but I'm going to tell you. You see, Bruce, I started doing some promotions. Uh, because uh, you got to attract an audience, you know what I mean? Uh, you you got to get go get some uh, people to listen to your podcast, kind of like you. I'm sure you got to do some uh, promotions and uh, try to get somebody to come and read your book, uh, or else how are they going to know about your book? And I post uh, some stuff on uh, Facebook, and it was innocent stuff, uh, you know, Bruce. I know I don't try to be offensive uh, with anybody, but uh, I know using a swear word, uh, maybe a couple of swear words, but nothing you crazy, you know what I mean? But uh, I post a couple of promotion things, and then all of a sudden, uh, I was a banned. I mean, the Zuckerberg guy, he banned me for 30 days. I'm in the, 
Isn't that a, some bullshit? I mean, what the fuck? I mean, come on. Gee, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that, Nuzo. Uh, speaking of Zuckerberg, uh, Bruce, uh, did you ever by chance see Meryl Streep at uh, the Cubs game? <laughs> Meryl Streep? No, unfortunately I never did. I wish I would have. I'm a big fan of hers like I think you are too. Um, but, you know, I did see lots of celebrities and politicians and sports figures. Um, everybody from uh, Eddie Vedder, of course, who sings the national anthem a lot. Bill Murray and John Cusack were big Cub fans. They were there a lot. Ron Howard, Penny Marshall, Faith Hill, lots and lots of celebrities. Oh, really? That's a nice. That's a, that's a lot of celebrity you've seen. You know, uh, by chance, uh, do you get uh, maybe uh, Dwayne and the Rock Johnson's uh, personal cell phone number? Because uh, uh, we were trying to get him on the show, and uh, we were going to get him, but there was no answer at his office or his uh, manager's office or his agent's office. Uh, do you got his number? You know what? If I had it. I would give it to you, Nuzo, but I, I'm sorry. I just don't have his number. Uh, it's okay, Bruce. Uh, I'm sure he's going to call us because as soon as he starts seeing my promotions on uh, the Twitter and uh, TikTok and all the other social media sites, I hope he's not a big fan of Facebook. That Zuckerberg guy cannot stand him. He's uh, like a, uh, a store mannequin. I'll plastic you know what i mean he's just like hey how are you zuckerberg he don't respond he's just like a mannequin but it doesn't matter bruce uh, i'm sure uh dwayne the rock johnson is going to call us when he sees one of those uh, promotions uh, but i got a question for you uh when did they build the wrigley field uh, i mean it's uh, i hear it's one of the oldest ballparks in the country wrigley field it was built in 1914 it was known as Wigman Park back then, and uh, it was uh, built two years after Fenway in 1912. So it was the it's the second oldest park uh, in Major League Baseball, and then uh, it didn't become Wrigley Field in, in until 1926. Wow, that was a long time ago, Bruce. Uh, 1926. Uh, that's uh, like uh, let's see, uh, 2021 minus uh, two. Then it would be the 20, what, 17, and minus another 20 is uh, 1986. Well, it's, uh, it's a long time ago. Uh, is that uh, when you started working there? <laughs> no, that was a long time ago, Nuzo. I wasn't even born then. <laughs> I know, Bruce. I did the math. Uh, if you think about it, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, the 1926... Uh, um, way over 50 years, you know what I mean? Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I go to, uh, I, I go to a lot of uh, the Cubs a game, uh, because uh, my family is a big, uh, uh, baseball fans and not as big as soccer, but, uh, baseball. And, uh, you know, I have seen a lot of crazy stuff. I mean, I've seen stuff that, uh, is a pretty sickening and disgusting and some stuff that was like, Hey, check it out. Uh, so tell me, what is the craziest thing you ever seen? Oh man, there. There was, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on. You know, when people have a few beers, they get kind of loose and, and don't really control themselves. You know, I, I saw things like uh, lots of fights, people getting in fights over seats. Uh, I saw one time I saw a guy uh, drinking his beer with a straw and he and somebody asked him to remove the straw. And he said he wouldn't. Um, I remember seeing uh, snow on the field and, you know, we were asked to shovel the snow off the field and that, that something didn't add up there. Uh, and you know what else I saw a lot? A lot of proposals. A lot of guys would uh, ask their girlfriend to marry them and get down on the knee right by the Cubs dugout. Uh, that was always cool. Did you by chance ever catch anyone doing the hanky panky? Uh, yeah, once or twice. You know, you'd find uh, you'd find a couple down in what, what we call the tunnels, which were the ramps down to the concession stand. And uh, they thought nobody could see them, but uh, we knew where to look. You know, Bruce, my cousin of Vincenzo's wife, uh, she's a huge Cubs fan. She's never at home. And uh, when we go over there to visit, I'm always like, hey, Vincenzo, where is your wife? And he's like, oh, she's at a, a Cubs game. I go, but it's an away game. They're playing in the Milwaukee Brewers. She drove to Milwaukee. Uh, she's a big fan. And I say, yeah, she's a big fan of something. And now I'm beginning to put two and two and two together. And I'm thinking, hmm, maybe she got a, she no really go to the Cubs game. Or maybe she is. And maybe she's a dating maybe a, a baseball player or maybe an usher, Bruce. Um, but did you ever see in the tunnel a like, girl that look uh, like she got a black hair? Uh, she looked like the girl uh, Marianne from uh, Gilligan's Island.
No, 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 ah. never, never. Who the hell is it calling me? I swear to God, I'm going to kick us some ass. Hello. Hey, Vincenzo, what's up? Oh, don't Vincenzo me, guy. What? That's all I'm saying. I listen. Huh? I listen to what you're saying. And you're talking about me and my relationship with no, my I'm... wife. What the hell is wrong with you? First of all, I, say... I did write a nice little thing to uh, Dear Abby, and it did get published. So, yeah, I am a writer. So don't freaking tell me I'm not a writer. No, no, no. <laughs> thing. Who the hell do you think you are just because you got a Stupid little podcast show. Are you serious? You could talk about my relationship on the air like that. I mean, come on. It was all this bullshit. 25, 30 different men that she had an affair with? No, I don't think so. Maybe 15 at the most, Nudeso. So you better calm your ass down. What do you mean? You're going to keep spreading that stupid no, bullshit. It, I swear to you, I'm going to sue I'm you. Okay, I'm not from here to eternity, and then you better tell that Bruce Borer, boring guy, whatever the freaking guy's name is, if he dares write a book about me and my relationship how with do you... my wife and how I became a writer too, I'm going to sue his ass also. And uh, let me tell you one more time, if I see you in the street, I'm going to kick your friggin' ass. Ma, come on, I think you can... By the way, you stupid numb nut. My wife's a big Sox fan, not a Cubs fan. She's a South Sider, born and raised. You idiot! Wow, that was a little scary. Yeah, but it was a little scary for sure because the show didn't even air yet. Hmm. So, Bruce, uh, let me ask you a question. Is uh, baseball your favorite sport? Yeah, baseball is my favorite sport. Uh, but I, you know, I like other sports. I like watching football a lot and soccer and. Basketball. Basketball? Come on. That's not even a sport. It is one of the most boring games I've ever seen played with the ball. I mean, uh, what kind of what kind of sport uh, can it last uh, one hour and the score's like 175 to 193? I mean, there's always uh, somebody scoring a point, you know what I mean? And then, you know why they score all the time, Bruce? And this is what pisses me off. Is it because of the, the net is like, uh, I don't know, 12 feet high? And all of the players are like, what, 11, 12? 13 feet tall and well, what is the challenge you know what I mean? I mean I mean their arms are like a five feet to seven feet that they can stretch I mean so you give a guy a ball he's got to run down on one side of the court to the other court and then he's got to stuff at the net whoopie doopie doo it's not a challenge anybody can do it if you were that tall so I I, I never like a bit you know basketball but uh, you know what I think they should do for real I think what they got to do is a change of the game a little bit like they got to get a regular guy height to, like like me, you know, five foot tall, you know what I mean? And basically you get uh, two teams of about uh, eight guys apiece that are about uh, five feet in height, you know what I mean? Then you give them a ball, you keep uh, the same rule. The only thing I would uh, do to save us uh, some basketball jobs is uh, each team would get one guy that's about 11, 12, 13 feet tall and he got to stay by the net, you know what I mean? So when uh, the regular height guy, he's uh, started to run with the ball and he goes and he tries to get it in the net, the super tall 12 foot, 14 foot guy he knocked the ball down, you know what I mean? So there's no points made. And then that's a very challenging. You know, a good game would be like a uh, red team, two points. A yellow team, five points. That's a real game. I like a soccer, you know what I mean? That's why I love soccer, because uh, it takes uh, forever to get a goal. And, uh, you know, you could be watching the game for seven weeks, and uh, you're like, hey, nobody scored. This is pretty exciting. You know what I mean, Bruce? Well, Newser, I got to tell you, you know, a lot of people love basketball. Bruce, you know what people really love? They love a calamari. That's right, calamari. Did you know that it is the most popular appetizer in uh, in a seafood restaurant? I mean, you cannot have a dinner without a calamari. And uh, obviously, there's other, you know, like mussels, which are delicious. But calamari is like everybody like a calamari. And I was thinking... Wouldn't it be a good idea? And now you think about it because uh, you have uh, some experience uh, being, uh, you know, looking at uh, the people at uh, the ball game. Wouldn't it be a good, uh, be a good idea if, um, 
They took a baseball bat, you know, like the little one, a baseball bat they buy for the little kids as a, a little monument or what's it called, a token, a little a little gift from the you souvenir. You mean a souvenir. A souvenir. You know those uh, souvenir bats that are about the maybe 12 inches in, in length? And so they actually average between 16 and 18 inches in length. That's what I said, 16 to 18 inches. But uh, listen, so you take, uh, I was uh, thinking this, and I think it's a million dollar, maybe a, a billion dollar idea. You take the calamari ring, right? And you, you put them over the uh, souvenir bat. So it looks like a big stick of a calamari, right? And now you wrap it in, you know, the paper. So when somebody come and they get the calamari stick, you know, they start eating a calamari one at a time. You know, they take the ring off, crunch, 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 munchy, munchy, delicious, delicious. Then all of a sudden they start seeing like this color, you know, dark blue. And uh, the more they munchy, munchy, crunchy, crunchy, munchy, munchy, crunchy, crunchy. They're like, oh, look at this. It's a souvenir baseball bat. This is a nice surprise. I didn't expect to get a dark blue cubbies a souvenir baseball bat. How wonderful. A souvenir baseball bat and the calamari. Well, Nuzo, you know, they are uh, serving sushi at a lot of ballparks now. Bruce. You know, since the bed is called the sluggers or whatever that may St. Louis slugger, um, they should call it the calamari sluggers. You know what I mean? Isn't that a great idea for a food for baseball? Hey, you never know. And uh, by the way, Bruce, uh, you know the whole sushi thing? Uh, it's uh, not a good idea to serve seafood uh, at, uh, at a baseball game. Uh, in the, it's, it's hot outside and it's going to stink everything up. You know what I mean? You know, Nuso, calamari is actually squid and squid is... At- Forget about it. Oh, okay. Uh, Bruce, I got another question for you. It's a two-part question, and uh, take your time and really think about this, because for the second question, I really want to know the answer. Okay, do you remember when uh, the guy, Mark McGuire, uh, from the St. Louis Cardinals, and uh, Sammy Sosa, who made me so, so happy that year, um, uh, they were going head-to-head, and they were battling for the most home runs, and they both were eating a little way too much of the Popeye spinach, if you know what I mean. My second question... Oh, wait, wait, my first question, were you there? My second question, in all of the time that you were ushering at Wrigley Field, tell me the answer got truth. How many hot dogs did you eat? Because when I go to the ball game, I can eat like a 2,000. Boy, that was, that was a great battle. Those were great games between Sosa and Mark McGuire. But, you know, your second question, how many hot dogs? Let me think. I would have a hat dog probably every other game. And if I worked about 50 games a year, so that was 25 hot dogs in a year, which is about 25 more than I would have if I wasn't. Oh, I'm sorry, Bruce, but we are all out of time. Thank you, Bruce, for coming on our show. That was a very interesting conversation. You taught me a lot of things about uh, the Chicago Cubbies and the Wrigley Field that I did not know. Listeners, go out and buy that book today. It is called The Best Seats in the House, A Diary of an Usher. Don't forget to go get it today. It's a beautiful gift, especially for people that are fans of baseball. And it is written by Bruce Bohr. And you spell his last name B-O-H-R-E-R. And I want to thank my listeners for tuning in again today. Uh Uh-oh, it's Vincenzo again. It's okay, I'm not going to put him right into the voicemail. Hi, you've reached Nuzo Casa Libero's voicemail. I cannot pick up the phone now. Please leave your name and a phone number and a brief message. If this is my cousin Vincenzo, Vincenzo, please note that I moved to Seattle. Only contact me if it's an emergency since I'll be moving a lot of furniture. Uh, have a good day. Uh, you guys, don't worry. I'm not really not moving to Seattle. I only put that on my voicemail so this way uh, Vincenzo thinks I moved and he's not going to come looking for me. Oh, shit.